This is Christ the King Sunday. Welcome, we worship God. Come, let us sing to the Lord and let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Come, into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all the gods. We are called to worship God and our first hymn is written by Michael Seward in 1964, quite a modern hymn. And in it, it's rather like a creed and he wrote it for young people to sing. It does remind us that Christ is King. Hymn 435, Christ triumphant ever reigning. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you, people who are hungry, people who are thirsty, strangers, imprisoned, exposed, knowing that you have come to us too in these same guises. In our brokenness, welcome us. And open up our defences as we come to you, O Lord of many guises. Truly, we say to you that we have seen the broken and have not been moved to compassion. 
Truly, we say to you that we have heard people mourning and have not given them our time. Truly, we say to you that we have witnessed oppression and have not raised our voices. Truly, we say to you that we have seen the stranger and not said a word of welcome. God, hiding in all strangers all around us, we are truly sorry for what we have done and what we have not done. And we ask you to deepen your welcome within us so that we might deepen our welcome around us. God, our ruler and guide, when we come to the place where the road divides, keep us true to the way of Christ, alive to present opportunities and confident of eternal life. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and many thanks to Margaret for leading us in worship today. Our reading comes from Matthew's Gospel at chapter 25, starting at verse 31 in a chapter entitled The Final Judgment. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refused to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Amen. I wonder if you know the story of the good man of Balangir. In Old Scots, good man referred to the laird, and Balangir is a place just below Stirling Castle. The tale is about James V of Scotland, who was married to Margaret Tudor. They lived in turbulent times, the times of the Reformation. In England, Henry embraced the Reformation, but in Scotland, James resisted. But James was a king who wanted to know his people, what they thought, how they lived. 
and it's said that he dressed as the good man of Balangirch and wandered around amongst his subjects. The tale tells us that he went on foot one day from Edinburgh to Linlithgow, dressed as the good man of Balangirch. He was assaulted near Cramon Bridge by a band of robbers. He defended himself with accustomed valour, but he was overpowered. Hearing the, the struggle, Jock Harrison, a farmer who was working in his barn nearby with his son, rushed to the scene and seeing one man attacked by a mob, he and his son set about them with flails and saw them off. Jock Housen helped the man to his feet and took him back to his cottage. There he gave him a bowl of water and a towel to clean himself up. He offered him some refreshment and he asked him to come and sit at the head of the table because he recognised when the man took his cloak off. He wasn't an ordinary man. The good man of Balangirch protested, but Howison insisted, saying, Do as I tell you, I'm the master here. Before leaving, the stranger thanked the farmer, Jock Harrison, and said, Come and visit me. I live in Edinburgh Castle. So Jock Harrison said he'd love to see the castle. And he promised that he would come as soon as it was convenient. What shall I ask for when I come? He asked. You'll ask for in James Stewart, said the stranger, and they'll bring you to me at once. A few weeks later, Howison did make the journey to Edinburgh. He got to Edinburgh Castle and he was ushered in. And there was a lot of nobles. He saw his former guest, who saluted him. Howison asked, Is the king here? How will I ken him? Why, said the good man, he is the only one present that's wearing a hat. Then, Howison said, looking round, he's only thee or me. The king smiled and said that he was indeed James Stuart and assured the good man that his services were not forgotten. His Majesty asked Howison what kind of gift he would like if there was anything he desired. Oh, Howison replied, the lairdship of my farm at Brayhead. The lands are yours, said the king, and I couple it with a proviso that you or your representative shall bring a basin of water and a towel to wash the king's hand any time he passes Cramon Bridge. The monarch invited Jock to come and sit beside him at the table at the top place. Harrison demurred. He hesitated. The king gave him a slap on the shoulder and added, Do as I tell you, I'm the maester here. Today, we're thinking of Christ the King Sunday. So perhaps the story of King James fits well when we remember that next Sunday is Advent or the beginning of Advent and Jesus will be coming soon, born as a baby in Bethlehem. Jesus coming from God to see how we live. But Jesus was a very different king 
I was thinking of the symbols that go with kingship. The crown, the scepter and the throne. Some of you will have visited the Tower of London to see the crown jewels or perhaps Edinburgh Castle to see the honours of Scotland. The crown we associate with Jesus is not a crown of gold encrusted with jewels, but rather a crown of thorns. And what of the sceptre? The sceptre is a rod, and in the Bible we read of the rod of righteousness. And we also read of it in Psalm 23, when it describes a rod as a shepherd's crook. And perhaps that's how we should think of it with Jesus. Jesus, the good shepherd, having a crook to find and restore lost sheep. I don't think a throne looks very comfortable. But they do symbolise authority. The Queen sits on a throne at the opening of Parliament when she reads the Queen's speech. But when we think of Jesus, his throne, the cross, a place of agony. Or we can think of Jesus coming from the throne of his Father in heaven and then later returning to it. What does all this mean for us today? Our Gospel story helps us understand. No one expects to see Jesus in the face of the disadvantaged, the poor, the imprisoned, those who are in greatest need. But as we read in the Gospel today, Jesus is served by how we serve the hungry, the poor, the needy. And when we show love and concern for others, we are showing love and concern for Jesus. And perhaps that's to be expected. When we think of God, we typically think of power and might and, and glory and all the rest. But we should remember, our God is a God of surprises. Amen. We remind ourselves of Jesus as Lord and King in our next hymn, hymn 443, He is Lord, He is Lord.
We remember the needs of the world in our prayer. Let us pray. God, you come in many disguises. In a friend asking for a chat. In a person asking for help. In all calls for assistance. May we take time to hear you. Knowing that when we respond to one person, we are responding to you, who always responds to us. We take time now to remember the needs of the world. Help us recognise these needs. We who have such plentiful rain and clean water, remember those who struggle, carry water, have to use dirty water. As we face cold weather, when we want to heat our homes, help us to remember to treat energy with respect, acknowledging that the Earth's resources are finite. We pray for those who feel so alone at this time. Give us confidence to phone people to cheer them when we have extra soup, to deliver a bowl of soup. When we bake for Christmas, let us share with those who struggle. We pray for those who are ill. Jesus, you healed people when you walked the roads in Israel. Inspire and guide all who work. Healing of bo the body, the mind or the soul. We pray for all young people, those too young to be concerned about COVID, those so concerned that they may not get home for Christmas, those worrying already about exams and their future. Give reassurance and strength and resilience. We are quiet to think of those we know we need our prayers. May we know the assurance that your goodness never fails. And with confidence, we join in the family prayer saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We bring our time together to a close with the hymn, A Favourite of Many, 462, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
God of kindness, send us out with more time for interruptions, with more generosity for kindness, that we might see you in all we need. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all now and always.